Welcome to September 1st Charter House Vesper Service. My name is Reverend Inetta Riddell. Beloved of God, for truly you are deeply, wonderfully, beautifully loved by the God of all creation. Come, let us worship God who loves us. Whether your week was filled with mountain high joys or valley low sorrows, peace like a gently flowing river or stress like a stormy gale, this is the time to rise and come away to worship God who sustains and tends to you. Come, let us worship God who loves us and tends to us. In a world that pulls us this way and that, God's love is our true north, guiding us with an uncommon wisdom through all that life brings us. Come, let us Worship God who loves us and guides us. Beloved, the time for singing has come because God's love, care, and wisdom sustains and guides us wherever we go. Come, let us worship and sing to the God who loves tends, guides, and sustains us. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading is from Psalm 15. Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell in your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart. Who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends and heap shame upon their neighbor. In whose eyes the wicked are despised but who honor those who fear the Lord who stand by their oath, every and even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The prayer of the day, creating God, you are the source of nature's splendor, the beauty and fragrance of delicate flowers and sweet sound of bird song. Welcome to you this morning with delight and gladness, grateful for all of your wonders. As the fields produce their harvest, may your love grow within us that we too may produce a harvest of love, hope, and joy. Amen. God and community, holy and one, hear us as we pray, as Jesus taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine art the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our New Testament scripture is from James 1, 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving 
with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave birth to us by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruit of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For human anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rancor of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely doers and hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongues and do no evil to their friends, nor help shame upon their neighbors whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath, even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take bribe against the innocent. Those who do not do these things shall never be moved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Today, I want to talk to you about, what do I want to talk to you about? <laughs> the bright side to dark times. Having lost in a fire everything they owned, the Stafford family made new plans, including a move from Chicago to France. Horatio Stafford planned the trip for his wife and four daughters to be as trouble-free as possible to transport them from America to France. He booked passage on a huge ship and made sure that they had Christians with whom to fellowship en route. He planned to join them a few weeks later, despite much careful preparation Mr. Stafford's plans suddenly dissolved when the ship carrying his loved ones was rammed by another vessel and sank, carrying his four beloved daughters to the bottom. Anyone 
who has ever had their plans disrupted by unforeseen tragedy can understand Mr. Stafford's plight. The words to the great hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, was penned by him as his ship passed over the watery grave of his four daughters. When peace like a river attended my soul, my way when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. When trials come into our lives, time seems dark and bleak. It feels as though there is just a dark cloud hovering over our heads. What is God up to? Is there anything bright about this whole dark subject? Trials come in many sizes, colors, and shapes. Sickness, cancer, death, pain, failing health, etc. And to the one going through a challenging time, it often seems as though there really is no purpose to this. They are irritating inconveniences to our lives that interrupts us rather than make us feel good, right? God's design for our lives is not necessarily to make us unhappy, but to make us holy. Trials do have a purpose, I promise you. That we may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. God is sculpting us to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Paul tells us in Romans, a verse in verse 28 through 29 that God causes all things to work together for the good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose for whom he foreknew he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren also in 2 Corinthians 3.18 he says, but we all with unveiled faces beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as from the Lord the Spirit. Wait for it. First Peter, he asserts, and after you have suffered for a little while, just a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. A day in the sun will always be a day. It must go through, a day pot must go through a furnace. When you look at porcelain under white heat to become porcelain, a, po a poet, I believe her name is Mildred uh, Struven or something like that. She um, penned a poem that says, a day pot 
sitting in the sun will always be a day pot. And I like that, if you think about it. And Erwin Luther describes it as such. We are like ants on a Rembrandt painting. God sees the big picture. We might not see that big picture, but God sees the big picture. Trials can be faced with joy. Our attitudes should be joy because God is ultimately in control. Why? Because God is shaping us to be more and more like Jesus because our experiences may someday help somebody else in the future. A.B. Simpson declared, you will have no test of faith that will not fit you to be a blessing if you are obedient to the Lord. I have never had a trial, but when I got out of the deep river that I could not get out of. Do you know that God is in control of your life? And do you know that God loves you and wants the best for you? He has not forsaken you during your trial. He has sent the trial our way to prove our faith and to make us stronger and more like Jesus. Usually when we face challenging times, if we call out to God, it is usually to ask him to remove the trial, right? But God wants us to cry out to him even when we don't have trials. He wants us to call out to him and have a relationship with him. He wants us to cry out to him for wisdom to know how to learn and to apply the lessons that has sovereign trials so that we can know the meaning. Accrued wisdom helps our faith to be stronger the next time we face trials. If we lack wisdom when tough times come again and they will come, it seems like they hit us blindsided, right? And it is like going back to square one again. God promises to generously grant us the wisdom we need to learn from our trials. That is why I like to be around older godly men and women like those of you here at Charter House. This is where the great wisdom resides. It definitely is not in my generation. Those of us who are still yet discovering and think we have it all figured out. No, those of you have been through the fire and felt the hammer. Usually, those of you have the great wisdom. This is not referring to worldly wisdom. This is heavenly wisdom spiritual wisdom, spiritual insight into the ways that God is shaping our lives to become more and more like the character of Christ. You've walked the walk, stood the test of time, had the burdens. Think for a moment of a water-saturated, 
sponge. If we push down with our finger, even slightly, water runs out onto the table. We immediately know what fills the interior pockets of the sponge. The same is true of ourselves. We can tell what fills us on the inside by what comes out under pressure. God honors undivided faith. Our faith in God's provision should be steady, not wavering. We cannot pray to God with our fingers crossed. This is like a field mouse in the middle of the road as you come upon it. He first starts toward the left, then the right, then left, and finally stands still as the car passes over him. We must either believe that God is going to do something or that he is not. Do not pray until you know that he will. Next time you are faced with a trial, rather than just asking God to remove it, ask him for wisdom to know how to handle it and how to learn from it for the future. God promises that those who show no need for God in their life, he will show no need for them in the next. That is a promise. Notice that verse says that the brother of humble circumstances has reason for glory in his prominent position. There is a word of difference between the trials that come to a believer and the trials that come to an unbeliever. To the Christian trials are a refining fire making our character more holy, our faith more stronger, looking to the hope of eternal life with God. A recent survey of discipleship journal readers ranked areas of greatest spiritual challenges to them. Number one, materialism, pride, self-centeredness, laziness, tied anger and bitterness, envy, gluttony, and lying. The survey respondents noted that temptations were more potent when they had neglected their time with God and when they were physically tired Resisting temptation was accomplished by prayer, avoiding compromising situations, Bible study, and being accountable to someone. When we face temptations in life, we often equate them to the trials that God sovereignly places in our life, but they are different. A trial is a positive testing of the strength of our faith to make us more Christ-like. But temptations are the evil enticements to sin and fall away from God. When temptations come, and they do, we often blame God for them, don't we? Temptations does not come from God. That is not of God. But the trials he sends our way can often be misconstrued as such depending on how we respond to the testing. Temptations fosters within us 
when it is enticed by our sinful lusts. Its end is death. Make no mistake. Romans says the wages of sin is death. Or this could be referring to the lifestyle of separation and pain that sin causes. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. That's Psalm, that's not Inetta's word, that is Psalm 32, 3, 4. You know, if you have the urge or mind to do something that contradicts the word of God, it is not God's will for you guys. If you have the urge to do something that is against what God has revealed in his word, we know that it is not for him. Whenever trials come your way, stay grounded to the word. As verse 16 says, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. We can trust in the goodness of God he will never try to entice you to do something that he declares to be sinful. Misunderstandings regarding temptation. Temptation itself is sin. We fall into temptation. We usually walk right into it. God is disappointed and displeased when we are tempted. To be strongly tempted means we are as guilty as if we had committed sin. We overcome all temptation by separation from it, period. When I am spiritually mature, I will no longer be harassed by temptation. When times are dark, and we are facing trials and temptation, we are reminded that God is good. He is holy. He is unchanging. So when we are hurting, when we are sad, when we are lonely, when we are angry, when we have feelings of despair, just remember that God is good. God is faithful. Though he allows us to be tempted in our anger, he is the giver of good things, including the strength to endure temptations that come our way. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man and woman, God is faithful. God who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, I promise you, that you may be able to endure it. You will, you'll get through it. Any pain, any hardship, with God's grace, you'll get through it. With prayer, you'll get through it. When times are dark, when times are difficult, trials in our life, remember that God is making us more like Jesus. He is building our character. God offers wisdom to strengthen our faith. He is building our faith and God reassures us of his heavenly promise and he is building our hope always. God reminds us that he is good and he is building our trust, amen. Please receive this benediction. Beloved, may God bless you as you go from this place carrying the word in your heart, living the story 
we share with the saints of old and the saints of now as we break down barriers to community and build up the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.